Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. We're at the beginning of Act 3. And at the very end of the last act, Conway got a fancy new leg. Whether that's real or just a side effect of the whatever that strange drug was that Dr. Truman gave us, I don't know. Also exactly where we are, I don't know, but Ezra's with us. And of course, Shannon and Blue. I know that at the end of the last episode, we told Ezra that we would maybe try to find their family who had gone missing. So perhaps that's where we are now, looking for the family? I don't know. How are the drugs treating you? Uh, I feel a little distracted. You're probably pretty tired too. I usually feel more tired after a late night nap. Hey, you ever take anything for that? Caffeine pills, or... It's all or nothing for me. Oh, right. They'll probably tell you to steer clear of all that stuff, huh? Yeah, I guess you never know. My folks had a peculiar relationship with medicine. We almost never had a regular doctor, or health insurance, or anything like that. Our immigration stuff was a mess for most of my childhood, so we only qualified for state programs in small patches before something or other would get contested and we learned to just pile on dentist appointments and stuff in those short windows. If a cut got infected or her migraines were too much to handle, mom would talk to so-and-so who knew so-and-so, usually another minor, and end up with some pills. Instead of medical advice, every pill came with gossipy anecdotal warnings and superstitions. Like, all this lore that came with it. Like magic. Dangerous. Mysterious. Ever run into any problems? Sure, yeah. Stuff would be expired or mislabeled. Mom was allergic to penicillin, as it turned out. That was scary. One time. In high school, we forgot these pills to help her focus. She was so smart, but always going off in different directions, mind racing, like five conversations going on in her head at once, and you're lucky if even one of them is with someone in the room. You know. So she had these pills, and they seemed to help. I was struggling in school, too, failing my history class. She offered to share the pills. Did it help? At first, yeah. It helped a lot. I had a kind of presence and clarity of purpose that I've never really had otherwise. I didn't want to stop taking them. One day I was sitting on my bed. My notebook was open next to me on top of a textbook, and I was holding a pen in my hand. I remembered this moment from several years before. It came up so suddenly with such precision, I couldn't put it out of my mind. I felt I had to stay with it until I'd recalled the whole thing perfectly. It was just a tiny, nothing moment. My mom patching up the side of a birdcage, winding some spare wire around the frame to reinforce it. I was fixated on that image and that sound. The cage kind of bending and twanging as she worked on it, wrapping and nodding. Scraping copper against paint like bowing a rubber violin with a railroad tie. Okay, before I continue, this actually ties back to something we saw in the last episode. Remember when we were in the museum and we looked at the birdcage? And Shannon got kind of wrapped up in the birdcage and ran her finger against it? She must have been thinking about this. My mom was patching up the side of a birdcage, winding some spare wire around the frame to reinforce it. Yeah. Huh. My parents came back from a triple shift and found me still sitting there on the edge of the bed. Pen in my hand, delirious with thirst, patching that birdcage with a thousand yard stare. Christ. That's scary. You get some rest back there? I don't feel much rested myself. We'll get a break. Maybe tomorrow, huh? Oh! 
hey there. For a second I was thinking, hey there, little bird. And it's just like a perspective thing, but no, that's the huge bird that took us here, right? What was her name, Julian? I'm just relishing in the fact that I can actually move fast now, now that I've got a new leg. Look at the ripples in the water. Nice. Okay, um... I think we're supposed to go ahead, up the stairs. But I want to check around the parking lot. Ah, look at those reflections. Wait a second. Am I controlling Ezra now? I am. Whoa. When did that happen? Why did that happen? Flora. Are those people like your new family? I think we're friends. I don't have any friends, because I'm so busy. Too bad it's not raining anymore. Did you make that boat? I folded it out of some paper from the front desk. How far do you think it will go? We should stand here and watch it until it disappears over the horizon, with a far-off look in our eyes. I'll lean my head on your shoulder and right when it's a tiny speck, just before it vanishes, you'll say something romantic. Okay. Well, we better get started. Is it moving away from us? I think it is. Very, very slowly. <laughs> I wonder if anything's actually going to happen. I'm not sure if going off the screen is exactly considered. Barely seeing it as a speck on the horizon, but maybe. Maybe? Okay, I just see the tip of it. Now it's gone, I just see tiny bits of ripples. I'm gonna wait here for a bit, I'll be right back. Oh! Now this popped up. Is this the moment? Can you still see it? Just barely if I squint. You better hurry up with a poem or something. Okay, um... A boat beneath a sunny sky. Lingering onward dreamily in an evening of July. No, no, it's not even sunny. It's okay. I like you anyway. I know, I was thinking that. It's not sunny, but, like, the other options didn't seem any better. I guess Ezra just really isn't good at poetry. That was such a cool little moment. This game is just gorgeous, and just full of tender moments like that. Oh, now we're back to controlling Conway. Okay, let's go up the steps. Who are they? Nine to five p.m. every day of the year except Labor Day. Last admission is at four p.m. daily. Damn. Try the door. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Bob. Emily, are these the people that were at this? These are the people that were um, underground. 
At the very beginning of the game at Equus Oils, they were playing a card game, but they weren't really there. They had lost one of their die, which I actually still have, right? Yeah, I, that's right, I put it in my pocket. I still have it. Are you folks lost? Ben to Emily. And then what? Yeah, just like before, they it's like they weren't able to see me. They were just talking to each other. Ben, you're being very uptight right now. To Emily. You're right. It's unlocked. I'm not sure it's finished in there, though. What's finished? Would it be better if it were finished? Can we be sure of that? Uh, this late you'll wake someone up. To Ben. Hush. I think I heard a voice. Maybe a security guard. Oh, right. So, yeah, we're back at the museum. So, I guess we're... We either already did or we're not going to look for Ezra's parents. I'm not sure. I didn't hear anything. We're just too late. Let's come back tomorrow. Alright, let's go in. If everything's shut down, it'll be pretty boring. Any of you folks know a diner or something around here? To Bob. What? I said it'll be boring. No, I... We have flashlights. Look, if we visit by day, we see what they want us to see. If we visit by night, it's all up to us. Emily, Ben, and Bob argue about whether to enter the museum. Huh. Well, I guess I'll leave them to it. I guess... Uh, what do we do now? Let's see, that whole journey was about finding the doctor. Now that we've got the doctor, I think we need to take the records that we got for Dogwood Drive back to Lula, right? So I think we need to leave. So what's the plan here? Hmm... Well, we should try to get in touch with that clerk, yeah, but uh, what do you think? Well, we've got to go back to the Zero and bring these documents back to the clerk at the Bureau. I'm just not sure how to get there. The entrance at the farmhouse was gone. Hmm. Let's take another look at that farmhouse. Sure. Okay. Maybe we missed something. Oh, <laughs> we can still see the bird flying around. But this time, we're not on the bird. I wonder if it just hangs around here or if it's gonna like follow us or something. Alright, back to the farmhouse. Let's get back on the 65. Whoa. The truck's engine sputters and dies as Conway guides it carefully off the road next to a fallen tree. Well, we didn't get far. Whoa. Is that Ezra playing in the tree over there? I think they are following us. Joining us on our journey. Nothing to be done? Can you take a look at it? I guess I could poke around in there, but I don't know a damn thing about engines. Wait, 
Is this why you always leave your truck running? That's right, we do always leave our truck running, don't we? I never even thought about that. Well, Lysets is up on a hill, so... I get the picture. Uh, anyway. Do you know this area? Anyone around here that could give us a hand? Well, looks like a road crew's been out here. Hey, we should call someone. Do you know a good towing company? Mm. Uh, I found this card for Mercadet Wreck Recovery on the dash. Mercadet. Alright, I'll give them a call. Hope I can get a signal out here. Janet speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Hi, hello. We've got an old, uh, I want to say diesel. The old truck just stalled out. Uh, inaudible, sleepy. <laughs> Did I wake you? Your card says open 23 hours a day. Maybe this is the one hour they're not open? <laughs> Uh, inquisitive. Yeah, that's why I'm calling, exactly. That's all. Obtuse. That's... okay. Look, we need to get back on the road here, and I'm sure you're busy too. Concerned. Uh, thanks for the offer, but we really just need a tow is all. Neighborly? We, uh, we already ate. As soon as you can get out here, we're off 65 somewhere, just kind of pulled up by this tree that fell over. Specific. That's actually a pretty accurate description of it, yeah. Hanging over the power lines, just like that. Did you see it go down? Indulgent? Okay, my pleasure. How long do you think you'll be? Distant traffic sounds? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I think they're on their way. Guess we have some time to kill. We could look over the road map again. I've stared at that thing too long already. Where'd you get that old map anyway? It's always just been in the truck. Huh. Someone must have grabbed it at a gas station somewhere along the line. Or maybe they threw it in the glove box at the dealership. When my parents bought their first car here, it came with a map. I used to sit in the back and pour over it. Aunt Remedios? Saw me looking at it, I guess, and a few days later, she gave me a map she'd brought from Colombia. It looked almost hand-painted. Deep, vibrant colors and rough border lines like anxious brush strokes. Really pretty. I'd slowly trace the coastline with my finger, like I was walking on the beach, and say, Here we'll swim. Here we'll start a fire. Here we'll find a cave in the cliff face and go live among the bats for a while. Uh... I think I'll take a look at that radio of yours. Maybe I, maybe I can get it going again. No point just standing around. Are you bored? Sure, but I don't mind. Yeah, I don't mind either. Let's play a game. What would you like to play? Um, we, c we can tell the future with this little tree branch. 
It's pretty easy. We just break off all the little sticks on each section and count through the different things that could happen. Okay, what should we ask? It should be about you. I can't do both the counting out and the questions. How will I travel in the future? Ezra snaps the smaller branches away, one at a time, counting out possibilities. Motorbike, motorboat, horseback, hearse, old truck, new truck... New truck. These other branches are too bare. Don't worry about it too much. It's just a bunch of sticks. Oh, no, this is Ezra talking to Blue. I wish Julian wasn't so busy right now. He's got a lot of houses to carry still. I wish I could help more. How's it looking? The leads are badly corroded, but I'm making progress. That's what I like about working on electronics. It gets easier as you go on. For me, it's just the opposite. Almost there. Random passerbys, or perhaps the people coming to help? Johnny, uh, is this the right way? I don't recognize these trees. Johnny and Junebug. What's to recognize? Just a bunch of trees. Just... the trees are so quiet, right? Usually you'd hear birds, wind, a squirrel or something. Turn your ears down and focus on the radio, Cricket. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm a little bored. I'll work some chord progressions in my head for a while or something. Is the bike kind of dragging a bit tonight? We've stripped our gear down pretty bare already. Yeah, beats hauling a couple guitars and amps around. I look good with a guitar. It's true. I guess you think I look good standing there with an amplifier under each arm, grinding my gears smooth. Just my type. Hey, yeah. Didn't you play on this record? Go-Go is on it. Yeah, Go-Go! Go-Go! That guy's out of control. We should do a set with him. He's a... Uh, he's a creep. Yeah, that creep can play though. What time is it? You've got a timing circuit. Yeah, but yours is more accurate. Harry's gonna flip out. That old man was born flipped. I just hope we can scrape up some tips. Hard enough when you get there on time. Just play that keyboard. I'll figure out the rest. I know. And they just jettison past him. You know, we're already late. I'm 
so we better keep moving. I just mean, what's another few minutes? Fine, just for a few minutes though. You're the best. And hey, maybe if they're not busy, they can fill some seats at the gig. You know, if no one's there, Harry will try and bilk us on our fee. Okay, so good, they're coming back. Was that him? That was a motorcycle. Uh, Mercedes has a big truck. Yeah, they're too fast for a truck. I bet they're getting chased by something. Maybe they just have somewhere important to be. Definitely getting chased by something. To Johnny, stay here. To Ezra, careful, he's wicked with strangers. <laughs> you. Talk is either three of us. Uh, let's go with Ezra. Who's chasing you? Hear that, Cricket? We're being pursued. I knew it. Who's after us? That's a good question. These folks seem to have a certain handle on the situation. So? Dinosaurs. Sure. Sure, something like that. Listen, we've got two questions for you folks. What kind of people do you take us for? I mean, how do we strike you? Uh... Speaking as Ezra, probably from space? I always said you fell from heaven, ma'am. To Johnny. Otherworldly. It's unmistakable. Now, here's another question for you. Do you like music? Once again, could speak as either of them. Uh, Conway. Well, I said he used to sing in taverns on the weekend. Beautiful stuff. Of course you do. <laughs> Say... They should come to our gig. Junebug, what an idea. Uh, well, we're waiting for a tow. A tow? I won't hear about it. This time of night, you'll be kicking your heels till dawn. We'll fix your truck up. Me and Johnny are a couple of regular gearheads. Why, I just put a new cylinder block in this baby over here. I'll get to name it. Um... The Weird Vector. That's what we call our bike. We call it the Weird Vector. Because the front wheel's a little loose. We'll get you fixed up quick so you can come to the gig. See, we have a regular booking tonight and, well, we're running late. Very late. That's what I told them. Now the old man who runs this venue, Harry Esperanza, is a notorious withholder. And if we don't get a few bodies in the crowd, well, he'll go all penny-pinching on us. Just a short set. We only have one song prepared. You'll come to the gig, won't you? Of course we will. To Johnny. Of course they will. Yeah, Conway's not even really getting a chance to answer. <laughs> Just started saying of, and then instantly, of course they will. Can you believe we almost didn't stop? Johnny talking to Blue. Hungry old lady? I think I've got a crust in the sidecar here. Yes, feed Blue. After all, it's so late. Well, it's all said and done. We stopped. That's all that matters. Our gig's in an old tavern called the Lower Depths. It's over there by old Charlie Moran Highway, just east off 65. We usually take a right off the interstate around the petting zoo. Johnny likes the petting zoo. I do like the petting zoo. 
Now, let's see about that truck of yours. I feel certain we can get it running. Oh. I guess they did. Alright. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go see some music at the Lower Depths.